The Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Arizona State University is a proud supporter of Indian Country Today. Students at Cronkite News and Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma cover indigenous communities together. This important work is distributed by more than 100 news organizations. This collaboration provides a much needed boost to coverage of Native American communities nationwide. Learn more at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Is Indian Country Today. Esquili, yes, eh. Thank you for joining us. I'm Patty Thalahungva. Here are the headlines from Indian Country Today. Tribes in New Mexico can now see how climate change is affecting tribal lands there. The free online climate risk map is now available. It was designed by the Energy, Minerals, and Natural Resources Department and the Energy Conservation and Management Division in New Mexico. The goal of the map is to provide New Mexicans with information on climate change in their communities. There are 23 tribal communities in the state. The project started in 2019 when Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham created New Mexico's first climate change task force. But then we're also trying to uh, find ways to adapt to the effects of climate change that are already happening and find ways to make New Mexico more resilient to those effects. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of different things that climate affects in our environment and how that interacts with um, socioeconomic factors. And we wanted to visualize as much of that data as we could to make it easier for state government and also local and tribal governments to prioritize what actions they wanted to take um, on climate resilience. The Energy Conservation and Management Division is also available to provide technical assistance to users. Some communities in Connecticut will lose out on a multi-million dollar grant unless their schools stop using offensive native nicknames or mascots. The provision in the state's budget bill is on its way to Governor Ned Lamont after clearing the state legislature. CNN reports it would bar the communities from receiving money from the Mashantucket, Pequot and Mohegan Fund. The fund comes from the tribal casinos that operate in the state. According to the state's Office of Policy and Management, more than $51 million has been given out this year. Kathy Osten is a state senator and chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee. She says tribes have said for years that native nicknames and mascots are, quote, horribly offensive. Killingly, a town of about 17,000, reinstated its offensive name in 2020, less than a year after changing it. The northeastern Connecticut town received $188,000 from the fund in, last, in the last year's budget. Towns have gone two years to change their names. They have two years to change their names or mascots or get permission to use them from a federally recognized tribe in their area if, it, if this becomes law. This year, New York's Tribeca Film Festival features lots of indigenous stories, actors, and storytellers. One film, Catch the Fair One, stars an indigenous boxer named Callie Reese. The film parallels moments from her life in many ways. Karina Dominguez talked to Reese at the world premiere. She's known as boxing world champion Kaylee K.O. Reese. Now, she's trying her hand at acting. At the world premiere of her debut acting performance in Catch the Fair One, Rees were a custom design by Hunk Papa Lakota designer Kayla Looking Horse. I'm just so excited to have everybody see the film um, and just, you know, we need things like this in front of non-Indigenous eyes so we can bring that awareness. More awareness may lead to some kind of preventative actions. The film is a revenge thriller about a Native American boxer who gets involved with human traffickers in an effort to locate her missing sister. And there's a lot of parallels in the film with my real life, but it's just a creative expression um, to really bring awareness to this issue. In the film, the former boxer retraces the steps of her kid sister to find the man responsible for her disappearance. It was really important for us, both myself and Joseph, to really have the audience feel the rage, the sense of loss, the sense of hopelessness, the sense of sadness. In real life, Reese is still training and chasing boxing titles, but this has opened a new door.
And I've been trying and, and wanting to get into acting since I was younger, especially something to do uh, at life after boxing. The film is one of eight that featured indigenous stories and storytellers at the 2021 Tribeca Festival. Stay tuned for more coverage of the festival later in the newscast. In New York, Karina Dominguez, Indian Country Today. It's the new year for indigenous people in Bolivia. To mark the event, the Bolivian president, Luis Arce, and First Lady Lourdes Duran are taking part in the New Year ceremony with the indigenous Aymara people. At the ceremony, the president asked for good health for the world and for the people of Bolivia. The pandemic has mainly affected Bolivia's most populated cities like Santa Cruz and La Paz. Maria Kisbert, an Aymara indigenous woman, attended the sunrise ceremony and spoke about returning to a pre-pandemic way of life. Since we are living difficult times due to all this problem of the pandemic, what we are asking Father Inti, the Sun God, is for things to return to normalcy, for the return of health, more than anything, health. People gathered at the ancestral site of Tiwanaku to watch the sunrise and receive the sun rays during the celebration known in Aymara as Wilkaku Tea, or the return of the sun. According to the Aymara calendar, this is the year 5529. And those are the headlines from Indian Country Today. I'm Patty Tholongba. Are you making vacation plans? The American Indian Alaska Native Tourism Association has some ideas for you. And ICT goes to the movies, to the Tribeca Film Festival in New York City. Welcome, Summer. And now that many of us are vaccinated, we're ready to go. And Indian country is open and ready for business. Sherry L. Rupert heads the American Indian Alaska Native Tourism Association, AIANTA's mission is to define, introduce, grow, and sustain American Indian Alaska Native and Native Hawaiian tourism that honors tradition and values. Agritourism, for example, is one of its new initiatives. Welcome, Sherry. Thank you, Mark. I can't think of an industry that was hit harder than tourism by the pandemic. How do we come out of that? You're, you're right. Um, one of the hardest hit in the country, um, really across the globe. Uh, one of the ways that we can um, assist with this is by providing some training uh, to the tribes uh, to help them rebound. And how does that, what form does that training take place? Is it in terms of the customer experience or is it setting up the logistics or what, what are kind of the steps involved? Well, all of it really. Um, you know, many of the tribes are opening back up and, and ready to go. And uh, what they're looking at as one of their highest needs is marketing. And uh, so we've been providing some training on marketing. Well, that's exciting. And, and it's a great story to tell. I mean, there are so many really remarkable places that are either on reservations or very near and uh, just folks need to learn about it. Right, and, and that's, that's what we're here to, to help them do. Uh, we do that in various many ways. Um, and, you know, through our, our websites and through uh, our trainings uh, across the country, we've been through the pandemic, we've been doing webinars, uh, which have been very helpful and, and very well attended. Uh, we've had our uh, American Indian Tourism Conference, uh, which attracted over 800 in this last year. Um, and that was virtual. We went from, you know, in-person to virtual. And now this year we're going back to in-person, thankfully. Is there going to be some sort of hybrid even with tourism or people wanting kind of both the experience of being there and being able to zoom in for something? Well, we're looking at um, recording all of the sessions and then having that available uh, for those, you know, that want to view afterward. Let me ask you about infrastructure. How, how is the tourism infrastructure uh, in tribal communities and is it improving now or is this an opportunity to improve it? Well, I think this is an opportunity to improve. We've seen across the country that uh, tribes are spending millions of dollars to be able to tell their story. And they're doing that through their uh, cultural centers. Um, so we've seen uh, many that are uh, coming online. Uh, the Mandan Hidatsa Arikara Nation uh, opened their interpretive center in May. Uh, the Choctaw Cultural Center is coming online in July. First Americans Museum in September and the Agua Caliente Cultural Center in 2022. Um, so, you know, it's all about 
telling their story. Um, you know, they know that they're not going to make a, a ton of money on these cultural centers, but it's an opportunity to tell the world who they are. Right. And even though they might not make money on the cultural center, once you're in a community, that's when spending picks up across the board. Right, right. Because, you know, people have to stay somewhere. They have to um, buy their food somewhere, gas their vehicles. And yeah, so the, it helps out in, in many different ways in their economies. One of the data points that I saw recently that I thought was fascinating is that national park tenants is um, soaring and many tribal communities are really near and have um, stories to tell within national parks. H how does that factor into your uh, group? So we, we work very closely with the National Park Service. We have a few agreements with them and uh, really doing the outreach to the tribes and um, working with, with both parties uh, to make sure that the tribal story is told and told in a way that is, is you know, authentic coming from the tribes themselves. Uh, for so many years I've seen in the uh, cultural centers within the national parks really kind of a, a one-sided story. But now we have the opportunity to work very closely with them and with the tribes um, for them to tell their stories. Well, in fact, I noticed one of the um, outreaches is along the Lewis and Clark Trail, which uh, is one where you not only have uh, an indigenous point of view, but you have multiple indigenous point of views and different versions of the same story told in really many different ways. Right, because uh, along the Lewis and Clark Trail, you know, they they contacted, you know, very various many tribes and they had different experiences with them. We do have an agreement with the National Park Service to, um, to work with the tribes along the trail and to uh, really kind of do an inventory of the, the native owned and tribally owned uh, businesses uh, along that trail. When you survey people um, outside of Indian communities, what do they are most, what are most of their questions about travel to um, the indigenous world? Um, we travel abroad quite a bit to market Indian country. And some of the questions that we get is, you know, are, are we allowed to visit Indian country? Um, can we live with you? <laughs> uh, those types of things. And so it's really kind of an educational opportunity to, to educate the other markets, uh, you know, uh, the UK, uh, Germany, Italy, about Indian country and um, how best to visit Indian country. Um, maybe some of the protocols um, that, you know, you just don't go on to Indian country and start snapping photos, you have to ask. And uh, so we do a lot of that when we're traveling. What about the apprehension from people within a community about tourism? We actually ran across um, some of that in the, the visits that we had uh, along the Lewis and Clark Trail um, just these past few weeks. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a community decision uh, whether they want to uh, have visitors um, in their communities, uh, how many visitors. It's all really up to them on, on what they decide. But what we try to convey is that, you know, this is an opportunity to tell your story the way that you want to tell it, and also an opportunity to manage the number of people uh, coming onto your reservations, and also to uh, manage the areas in which they're visiting. You know, if there are sacred places to your tribe uh, and you don't want to share them, you don't have to share them. And so we really um, encourage, encourage them to to really um, take a look at uh, what they're willing to share and what they don't want to share. Your association has done a lot of work to uh, embolden uh, entrepreneurs. Um, I, I always think one of the stories that's not told is um, if you want to see pure capitalism, go to a flea market. <laughs> it is intense and active. And yet along the route, that's the kind of thing that individuals are doing in great numbers. Right. I mean, I. I saw um, wonderful things um, in the in, in Indian country as, as we traveled along uh, the trail. And so you mentioned entrepreneurs and um, we found that, you know, in abundance along the trail. And uh, one that comes to mind was in, um, with the Nez Perce tribe, uh, one of their tribal members 
um, Stacia Morphine has, she's amazing. She's um, come up with the tours for the Nez Perce and she has her own storefront where she sells native art um, from not just the Nez Perce, but from other native artists across the country. And it's a beautiful, beautiful shop. In fact, I'm wearing some of the earrings um, from her shop uh, today. Very nice. H how do you get young people interested in that kind of entrepreneurship? Well, you know, I think that when we're, um, when we invite visitors to our communities and we're teaching them about who we are, our children are listening and they're learning um, as well. And um, as you get more visitors, you begin to understand what they're looking for, you know, what they like. And we know that, um, you know, people like to shop. They like to take something back with them to be able to share with their family and their friends. And so um, shops like um, uh, the tradition um, store that I was just talking about uh, with these beautiful um, earrings and uh, many other things that she had in her store uh, is an opportunity to um, buy something from that place and take that back with you to share. And that's really been a change. I think when I was a kid traveling, all of the tourism shopping was pretty much really awful stuff. A um, couple bucks here, a couple bucks there until it added up. Now you're seeing people buy really out value added quality merchandise from tribal communities and then coming back over and over with say moccasins or other uh, high end. Right, right. And um, that's that's the thing, you know, people are looking for authentic and and original and you know something um, that nobody else is going to have when they go back to to Italy or to China you know they want to be able to to show that off and these authentic items where they can see um, who that artist is and know that it's an original piece you know from a native artist that means something to people and they're willing to spend a little more for those items. How do you go from zero to 60 in an economy with now that everyone wants to travel and wants to do it right now? How, how do you manage that explosive growth? You know, it's it's a challenge, uh, but the, the tribes and native owned businesses have had an opportunity to to plan uh, for that during during COVID. Um, and we and I think that's why we've seen kind of higher numbers for our trainings, uh, not just only for our webinars, but for our certificate program in cultural tourism. Um, people are um, preparing themselves for this. And I think they have a, a good idea of, of what they need to do moving forward. Where can people find out more about how to travel to Indian country? So we have a consumer website, nativeamerica.travel, and it's a beautiful website. And it's, it's more of um, inspiring people to come to Indian country. They'll see information on there from tribes across the country and all the, the native owned and tribally owned businesses as well. Thank you, Sherry Rupert. Thank you. When we come back, natives in New York, go to the movies. This year, Indian Country Today went to the movies, the 2021 Tribeca Film Festival in New York City. Karina Dominguez and special correspondent Megan Sullivan have this report. Leo Sanchi Maniavo, I'm Karina Dominguez. I'm here in Lenape Hoking, also known as New York City. We're at the Tribeca Festival 2021. There was a handful of native stories and storytellers here. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the Tribeca Film Festival. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> which was co-founded by actor Robert De Niro and producer Jane Rosenthal. Attending the screening in person was a surreal first trip to NYC for many, like six-year-old Amaya Wan and her family. I thought it was very cool and I liked it and I was, I was gonna cry at the end. Amaya Wan plays Alsa in the short film Buros. In the film, Alsa comes across a young migrant girl in the desert who lost her dad while traveling through the Honoatam tribal lands. They knew who was the girl for Elsa in that movie. 
It was for me. Executive producer Larry Bear Wilson guided the filmmaking process, letting the crew know what could and could not be filmed. He was a liaison between the community and the crew, getting the necessary permissions from communities and ensuring cultural appropriateness. Because a lot of people don't know what's going on out there, you know. Increased militarization along the border has not only made it hard on undocumented people to cross, it's also made it difficult for indigenous families to stay connected. We were there before that border was, you know. Our people are on both sides. And in fact, I have family in, in Mexico too. Those difficulties are highlighted in the film when Alsa opts to speak English, knows little of her Tohono O'odham language, and doesn't understand Spanish at all, while her grandmother is trilingual and fluent in all three languages. Otamyoy. Otamyoy? Beautiful. It's, it's sink. I'll see you again. Juan was emotional when expressing her gratitude for the filmmakers and her community in South Arizona, which helped her raise the funds to attend the film festival. And Liz and Jeff, thank you for letting me um, be on the show. On the, the thing. Thank you. Thank I'm going to cry now. Aww. <laughs> so sweet. Oh, and um, thank you for the community for helping me, for my helping me and and the donations for us to come to come out here and, and just to let you know you're the best in my family and I hope you're doing great and I love you all on a lighter note Executive producers Sterling Harjo and Taika Waititi are behind a new television series on FX called Reservation Dogs. So I'm here with Sterling Harjo. He's the writer and director of Reservation Dogs. Um, it's a show about four Native American teens in Oklahoma, and it's a comedy show. And so um, we're excited to hear about it. How do you feel being here? It feels really good. Uh, excited to show it to the world and or to Manhattan right now. I don't want to follow you? No, I almost follow him. You're just like his Insta. We ain't amateurs, man. The comedy follows the adventures of four indigenous teenagers from rural Oklahoma. Native people are some of the funniest people in the world, and our communities are rich and vibrant and quirky and weird and lovely and beautiful and sad, and that's what this show depicts. Before the screening, cast members said they could not wait to see how the audience would react. I'm so excited to see uh, what people are going to think of it, especially non-Indigenous uh, audience members where I'm like, will they get our jokes? Will they understand our humor? I'm just like so curious, but I'm so excited. I'm like starting to get nervous. <laughs> Jacob says it's promising to see Indigenous people in modern roles with a full range of emotions. I hope that this opens the door for a whole industry of indigenous creatives for us to look around and see all of our storytellers showing different types of projects, showing dramas, showing, showing comedy, showing scary stories and all of it. Harjo says his goal with the show is to depict Native Americans in a realistic way. Because we've been zombies in westerns for so long and we've had no voice and no souls and it's important to show that we are human beings. We're really here doing this to this day, like Native people, because you don't, you don't see Native people on TV a lot, like growing up, mostly like cowboys and Indians. Patricia Tarrant attended the world premiere and enjoyed the indigenous inside jokes. We use humor as like a coping mechanism and we do a lot of stuff like through trauma, generational trauma, we use tr humor to help us recover from it and move on. All four cast members had the same message for aspiring actors. Just be yourself. Just keep just keep going at it. It'll everything will be fine. Everything will work itself out. Work hard towards your goal and uh, it's just everything's gonna be alright. DeFaro added some words of encouragement for those who are looking to break into the industry. You know, we're gonna do a lot of stuff, you know, as a whole community, not just me and not just the people on this set. You know, so um, keep writing, keep writing, that's what I got to say. 
just just do you just be you don't don't try to be anyone you're not always be yourself always respect your elders and yourself know your path stay true to your path don't focus on all that have a vision stick to it and put action into that it's not a dream without action it's like, it's like a once in a lifetime kind of thing Never thought I would be here, you know, even before I was acting, even, even when I started. So I'm very grateful, so thank you, you know, for taking your time and doing this stuff. Other notable screenings included Joe Buffalo, an indigenous skateboard legend and Indian school survivor who faces his inner demons to realize his dream of turning pro. Primera is a documentary that follows a revolutionary movement in Chile led by students, women's rights activists, and the indigenous community known as the Mapuche Nation. After covering the screenings at this year's Tribeca Film Festival, one thing was clear. Native people and native stories are here to stay. In New York, Karina Dominguez, Indian Country Today. And that's a slice of our indigenous world. Join us again tomorrow and online at IndianCountryToday.com. Thank you for watching. I'm Mark Trahant. Sometimes you got to take a stand just because you know you can oh, you got to run you got to run This is Indian Country Today.